And so the point of this video is I want to show you how to network two graphs. These are both Garmin 93 SV ultra high definition, and it's super simple. And what networking means is I'm using one transducer for both of the graphs and they're both connected. So I can, for example, I'm going to mark a waypoint here. All right. That is 0115. And now it shows up on this other graph, 0115. Now, some of you may ask, why do you need two graphs? And the answer is you don't need two graphs. This is totally overboard, but something that I wanted to do. And I'm probably at some point in the future going to be going to, you know, forward facing sonar. And I like the fact that on one graph, I'm going to keep side imaging, down imaging, uh, 2D sonar and the other one, I'm going to have my map open so I can look at contours, depth changes. It's just going to be easier than flipping back and forth. Totally unnecessary. I know some of you are thinking, wow, this guy's going way overboard and you're right. Uh, but I'm going to show you anyways, just in case this is something you want to do. And it's very simple. If you look on the back, this is the one connected to the transducer. So this red is your power, orange is transducer. And this is your uh, panoptics uh, cable or your network cable. It's basically a Cat5. You can use a Cat5 cable, but this one that Garmin sells is waterproof and pretty inexpensive, and it comes in various lengths. This is six feet. That's all that I need since they're so close together. And so all it is is this network cable. So I have it right here. I got it all nice and tidy but it just runs to this same panoptics port on the other graph. And on this one, like I said, you're sharing transducers, so you don't need one here. So you just put the cover on it. And the power cable is the only thing that you're gonna need. So I have that running down here, made it as neat as possible. And what's cool on a side note about Old Town is it comes pre-drilled with uh, through hole uh, holes there and there, and then also one for your transducer here. There's three cables here, two are power cables, one is a transducer cable, and the power cables I fed inside through here. It's not that hard if you use those, I don't know what they're called, you use them for the ceiling to install recess lights. I have the power cable running through here into my Yak Power system, and now that I have two graphs, what I've done is use the Nakwa smart link connector here. So that's the smart link connector and this allows you to connect two batteries and it's going to automatically switch between one to the other once the battery is depleted in your primary source. So I have a 20 amp under here and a 10 amp for a total of 30. It's flashing right now because that means it's using your secondary source. So my 20 amp hour is dead and so now it's using the 10 amp hour. Is, this is the easiest part because it's all plug and play from the Yak Power um, to the 12 volt regulator to the Smart Link connector to the Nakwa battery. So I'll just disconnect these two pieces here and charge it. So far, I haven't tested it on the water yet, but very, very simple. Oh, real quick. The way I mounted it is it's a Yak Attack fish finder mount to this holder, I forgot what it's called. This is also Yak Attack. Because this carries so much weight and this track itself is a plastic, I thought this using this two uh, supports here would be better. On this one, it's just a single to a Navar handle. We'll see, I think it's gonna work well. Um, but if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, take care guys.